Welcome back. Uh, let's start with the Daily Guy this morning. Uh, uh, quite an interesting photograph here. 13 president, presidents in court fit hanks. EC ballots tomorrow. Uh, uh, these are pictures of uh, some of the candidates who were disqualified and were given the opportunity to get back onto the ballot. And uh, Daily Graphic goes on to say that nine aspirants submit forms. EC to decide uh, fit today. Supreme Court hears oral submissions on special voting today, and is it oppressive tool against Ghana's democracy? Daily Graphic has all these stories. The Ghanaian Times uh, carries the same story. Who gets the nod? And uh, comes with a photograph of some personalities here. And uh, uh, the Today newspaper says, Indom submit forms after amending errors. And uh, another story, I will restore Nessus Alawa. That's the story from... The camp of Dr. Indum. BNFT says Tekpe assures businesses uh, definitely ahead of the December uh, 7 polls. So these are uh, some stories on the, the pages of the newspapers I have with me here uh, uh, this morning. Let me tell you who my guests are. And uh, to my right is a member of parliament for the Blikma Central Constituency, Honorable Tufus Thede Chai. Good morning. Good. And I hope you are doing great. Yeah. Right. Yes, yes. And to my left is a member of the MPP's communication, Deputy Communications Director of the NPP, Michael Quay Jr. Good morning, too. And yes, I, hope, I, hope morning, right. I hope you are doing good. Oh, by the grace of God. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, let's start with this one. A uh, quick one at what is happening in the <laughs> United States. Of, uh, the, so um, uh, does it come to you as a shock that uh, Trump is uh, in the lead and eventually on track to uh, winning the Oval Office? Well, um, the, the projections that um, we've seen over the period, mm. especially uh, looking at some of the projections that uh, CNN especially and other uh, networks in the United States have been giving as the public. Um, well, it was very close, but all the time, uh, the projection was that uh, Clinton was leading. Right. But per uh, what we've seen now, uh, there has been a lot of uh, surprises, especially in key states that um, the projections were that um, the Democrats were going to win. But it turned out to be the opposite. Mm. Well, uh, there are still some uh, states left. Uh, let's see what happens at the end of the day. But um, for me, uh, what we as a nation needs to learn from what is happening in the U.S. is the, um, the calmness of the people in terms of even when they went to the polls to vote. If you see the arrangements, how people were very calm, uh, had the patience to join the queue mm -hmm. and then cast their votes and then leave the polling uh, centers. Uh, it brought about um, a very serene environment. And that is what, um, for me, I want the good people of this country to emulate. Mm, I see. What about the swiftness of the uh, security agencies? A few were told uh, bare-chested uh, Trump supporters uh, had to be uh, taken away from the, the, uh, one of the polling stations. And you could see the swiftness of, of security agencies. Yeah, not only the security, but mm. then I think uh, the justice system was also very, very swift. Mm. You could remember... Uh, the camp, that is Trump camp, right. uh, sent some issues to the court and immediately it was dealt with. Mm. So when it comes to election issues, um, we should be up to the tax. The court system should work very well. The security system should also work very well. And mm. that all together will give us very good and peaceful relations. So we should emulate what the US have been able to do. I'm grateful. Right, so, <clears throat> Trump is in the lead. Yes, um, very good morning to um, you, to my brother, uh, Tete Chai, and of course, uh, the viewers as well. Shock. <laughs> Surprised. <laughs> Maybe flabbergasted. I, I just don't know even the words to um, churn out to describe this very unusual pattern that has taken place in the United States. And to be honest, uh, I don't have much to say. 
all I can say is, who would have expected mm. that Donald Trump will be on 244 states as we stand now, mm. as against Hillary's 217? And worst of all, Hillary to be led by Donald Trump in Pennsylvania. Unbelievable. Now, Michigan is even worse. That's what Pennsylvania is basically the same percentage, mm. but more votes. More votes, right. That's what Michigan, it's a point. You know, 48, 47, and so on. I mean, it's, it's shocking. And I'm wondering that, is it really the case that a message that I will build a wall to stop Mexicans would resonate with Americans who, by the same token, mm. voted for Obama. And they are saying, it's as if we are tired of having a, a, an anti-white president or a president who is not white. We've had enough. Now we let us to go test and see. the other way, the other extreme. Um, we've had a black, we don't want a woman. It's too many firsts in the same America. Let us try this uh, outsider who, by all means, is very different mm. and very unusual. And the scandals that came in terms of his treatment of women, his treatment of staff, his um, bankruptcy record, and all the rest of it. I mean, I really don't mm. understand what the Americans want for a president. Mm. And it is very, very shocking mm. to see that some of the typically, um, you know, swing areas like North Carolina, mm. you know, a rally in particular, which was Madam Clinton's last stop mm. whilst Donald was in Michigan. He has won North Carolina, and yet with the Michigan vote, Donald is ahead. So it's as if with our last minute previous strategy, none of it worked. I mean, to the average mind, we all know that this email nonsense is, mm. is of no consequence because it's not criminal. Nothing was going to come out of it. Eventually, nothing came out of it. Mm. Talking about emails that her staff sent or something mm. on that tip. Could that have was, been here and doing the emails? Well, I, I don't think so. Because I think the American people understand better than we do here that the emails are of no consequence. In fact, the FBI closed it. Again, you know they closed one against her. Mm. What was reopened was not against her. Right. It was against another staff member. Mm. Clouded and shrouded to look as if it had something to do with Hillary. So I'm very, 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 very surprised. Mm. And... Um, I just wish that uh, <laughs> we, we will learn certain lessons from this uh, uh, as a nation. The only thing I am not happy about, and it's controversial, but I'll raise it because sometimes we have to make your show uh, uh, interesting, <laughs> I see. is the comments by the General Secretary of the NDC yesterday. I don't know if you heard them. <laughs> I didn't hear it. Okay. And I'm sure I saw that they said it. This morning was being played on Joy FM. So for the benefit of you not hearing, I want... The audience out there to know that it was even played on Joy. I had yesterday on a Semper. Okay. <laughs> Making analogies that, uh, oh, um, mm -hmm. Nana Kufuado is like Trump. Nana Kufuado is not a failed businessman. And that if Trump wins, that means Nana Kufuado will win. No. We are not looking for that kind of Achunayi win. That, oh, if Trump wins, therefore we have won. Mm. Of course, I mean, we want Nana Kufuado to win. So if that's what Ghanaians would think, fine. But that's not the issue. Secondly, and that uh, Donald Trump wants to build a wall. And the wall he wants to build is like MPP. They don't like Omun Pahoho. They don't like foreigners. Ah, yes, it's true that in the 60s, there was an aliens compliance order. Mm. But are we not the same Ghanaians who also sacked Nigerians? They didn't know happen. Mm. And uh, I think, is it not Liman or Rawlings? One of them in the beginning, early 80s. It happened in this country. It was under Liman. Yes, we sacked Nigerians. Because at that time, so are we saying that CPP people don't like, Nkrumah people don't like, and so on and so forth. I mean, that kind of talk in the politics, excuse me to say, is too uh, uh, cheap to use under these circumstances. And it should not happen. That uh, somebody, and, and, and even an, an, uh, 
uh, another one that uh, MPP is complaining about the rigging of the election and so the person is complaining about rigging of the election most in this country is an NDC member, Martin Hamidou. <laughs> and in his case, if, for example, the EC were to give you and I mm. a full list with everything, and they give Tete Chai a list that doesn't have everything, wouldn't Tete Chai be angry and ask, if it's not negligent, is it because you want us to suffer? Is it because you want us to rig? Will you not ask that? So, you, so, so let us so look. You were, you were raising legitimate, legitimate what I'm questions. Saying, yes, let us look at the issues. Mm. And let us look at the context in Ghana. Mm. And let's look at the change context in Ghana. Then he raised Obamacare. Because Hillary Clinton is a social democrat. What are you talking about? Obamacare is NHIS. MPP brought NHIS. In terms of politics. So you see, it's neither here nor there. Kumsi, kumsa, all over the place. Please. Leave American election alone and let Ghana to have well, election. Well, Mike, we can leave it alone. It, it, but let me quickly stay. <laughs> we'll get to the word. Let me quickly stay on it. We'll stay a bit longer on this uh, briefly before we move to the local syndrome. Teoflos talked about the the court issue that uh, Trump uh, uh, took to uh, the Nevada court and quickly it was dealt with. And also the fact that some... Uh, uh, people who had um, uh, were bare-chested Trump supporters quickly were taken away from uh, the polling station. Uh, let me stay with you a, a little longer. Yes, yes, that's the, the, the justice system and the way it dealt with that uh, uh, court issue and also the fact that uh, these supporters of Trump were quickly taken away from the police station to prevent any, any confusion. Yes. The, the, the conduct of the elections. Let's stay on it a bit longer. Yes. Um, you know what? It was fantastic to hear mm. about the security actions. That is reminiscent of 2012. In fact, if you notice, and this is one of the reasons why I appeal to IGP, Mr. Kodolo, to follow the example of his immediate past boss, mm. Paul Teriakwe. Look, I am telling you on authority, not a single person in government or a single person in opposition complained about the police. You remember what they did in 2012 elections? MCE was found holding some uh, 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 ballot papers, whisk away. MPP person found making a mistake, whisk away. The security forces were so fair and even handed, mm. nobody has complained about them till today. You see where I'm coming from? Mm. But, for example, if Mr. Kudalo makes us feel that he's being an even-handed, we'll complain. Is that how you feel? No, no. I'm not saying that. I said if he makes us feel. Mm. But if he makes us feel that everything is being done with justice and equal rights, we'll get peace. As the song goes, we want equal rights and justice. That's when you'll get peace. Because Ghana, our motto is not peace and tranquility. Our motto is freedom and justice. Because we know that when there's freedom and there's justice, there will be peace. That's why Ghana is a peaceful country. Because our motto equates or generates peace. Let's talk about peace. Now, uh, I'm, I'm uh, coming. I'm coming. Uh, now, now right. look at the courts. Mm. Look at how swift. Do you know some of the courts, they actually sat 30 minutes. 30 minutes. In some of the areas, um, in Nevada, for example, there were issues, Nevada County, there were issues of um, people not being able to vote longer mm. because of um, a malfunction. Equipment. Yes. So the court would sit down, well, okay, the uh, machine must function for four hours, so we extend it by four hours. Is there a problem? No, that's not But problem. if we sit in a country where electoral commission you would, and of course, I know we'll talk about that later as well on the matter, but you will tell somebody that you have made one mistake. Write to the person. The person takes the issue to high court and wins. You don't understand. The person takes it again to the Supreme Court. Again, they win. They say, let them correct it. Then you say, well, but uh, the one that you, you brought, uh, we gave you, is actually not one. It's actually 105. What is wrong about that? Why are you always changing the goalposts? Can't you be consistent? But if there are mistakes, one if thing there are mistakes about, on the farm, it's uh, not about on mistakes. The form, then you yourself, you cannot keep changing goalposts. 
you must be consistent. I thought the court ruled that uh, the, the everything that EC had done was was wrong. So we are all starting on a clean slate. So if the form that was there had errors apart from the one that was seen, should they point it out? Why? Right. What judgment did you read? I read the judgment of the Supreme Court. Oh, no, no, no. I don't think you did. Because if you read that judgment, mm. you won't come up with that conclusion. What did the Supreme it Court was, say? Yes. The Quickly, before Court, I go to your yeah, first. The, the Supreme Court never said that. And I want to... It, it didn't uh, ask them to start on a clean uh, no, slate? No, 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 no. Never. Okay. The Supreme Court never said that. Well, on what basis would they talk about clean slate? That's not possible. But if, you, if you're giving them the chance to correct the, the errors, isn't it a clean slate you're starting on? No, 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 no. It doesn't work like okay, that. Okay, maybe there will need some education. Yeah, let me explain you. to you the right. judgment. Mm. Okay. Now, the first thing that was said is the applicant extends the nomin the applicant, okay, mm. should extend the nomination period from seventh to eighth. Right. That was the first contention. Mm. That the nomination period should be extended. Two, the applicant should invite the interested party and presidential candidates who were able to submit before that thirtieth deadline. Mm. So that one is the second thing. Right. So you can't get new people who would want to enter the new nomination period. Mm. It has to apply to those who were before. Three, in appropriate cases, afford the uh, candidate the opportunity to comply with regulations 9-2 of public relations, uh, so and so, so. Public okay. elections. Public act. elections regulations. That's the CI-94. Okay. We're talking about where it looks at the issue of alter and amend. Mm. So that was the judgment. There was nothing saying that the Supreme, the EC can go and find more mistakes and ask them to correct more. Because you see, so if there were mistakes, no, hold on, on hold on, hold on, should, hold on. Let me tell you, no, 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 that's not the point. What is oh, the point? They are not, they are not, you're, you're, you're rushing me. Let me push, lay it down. Because, what I'm because two floors need to no, come in. You have been talking for the past only uh, if I answer 10 your question. minutes. Yes, but I have to answer your question. But so quick, uh -huh. mm -hmm. thank you very much. Now, if you have been written to that you have one mistake, you have already corrected it or started correcting it. Because you remember most of them said they corrected it and sent it back. That is why the court extended the nomination period by only one day. Mm. But where you have added an extra 105 after the Supreme Court orders, then now it becomes a conundrum. Mike, I'm, not I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm trying to un understand what you're saying. So uh, your point is that, okay, EC should just accept that those mistakes are on the form, but it should allow it to go. I didn't say that. What are you saying? I said that the EC had an obligation to be transparent, and they also had an obligation to be consistent, mm. because consistency brings about certainty, as far as the law is concerned. Now, with regard to the EC, mm. they don't only have to be an independent body. It is not the only criteria by which they are judged. Now, if you look at the guide, guiding principles in terms of the Handbook on Election Management Design, which is done by the Institute for Democratic and Electoral Assistance. That's a worldwide body which governs EC. That's Electoral Commission. Listen to it. Independence is one of them. Mm. Impartiality, integrity, transparency, efficiency, professionalism. Now, okay. where is the efficiency of professionalism? Okay, my, if you, what is your point then, here as far as the errors point, are concerned? Your question will be answered. I'm saying that, where is the efficiency? If you tell me, mm. not by mouth, but by press conference and by a letter, you, the EC, that made one mistake, mm. and then later on you go and say it's 105, you are shifting the goalpost. Another one that the EC must be is accuracy. EC cannot afford to make those mistakes and increase it. Ask the child, if EC told him he has made one mistake, and he goes correct it, and he comes back, and they say it's 105 mistakes. Will he be comfortable? This is the issue we are talking about. And I'm saying that the EC themselves, they went through the forms. Why didn't they come out to the 105? Okay. Then it gets to this point where the EC now uh, realizes 105 realizes when? More, more errors after the ruling. <laughs> are you saying that EC should have allowed those errors to, to sit on the form? I'm saying that the EC themselves should have service-mindedness and professionalism. And realize that if they are going to discover more mistakes, mm. then they should actually even tell the Supreme Court that, oh, this one day is not going to be enough because we are actually going to discover more. But you don't allow the, allow the Supreme Court mm. to make an order based on one mistake by um, 
what do you call it? Um, PPP. Four mistakes by PNC. Nine mistakes by APC. And then now you go and change it to 303 mistakes for PNC. Unacceptable. I see. So the issue should allow the errors. I think that's what you're talking about. No, 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 no. You, oh, I mean, right. You, you see, words have no meaning except in the context in which they are used. Mm. I explained that the EC should either let sleeping dogs lie or ask for By allowing the mistakes. Wait, 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 wait. Or allow the nomination period to be extended. But as the nomination period is one day, anticipating one thing, they cannot change the goalposts based on this short nomination period. That is unfair. All right. I'm grateful. Jeffers, we're, we're talking about uh, the, uh, the swiftness of the judicial system in the U.S. And, and then we, we, we brought it into what is happening here. But let's say just about five minutes more on the U.S. elections. Now, the, the, the campaigning process itself, we saw the, the mad slinging that went on. Uh, uh, Clinton called uh, supporters of uh, uh, Trump deplorables. Uh, 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 Trump himself uh, suggested that uh, uh, Clinton is crooked and, and even threatened to, to, to jail her in case uh, uh, he becomes president. Now, perhaps, what lessons can we pick from there? Yeah, um, sometimes in campaigning, um, strong words uh, may be used depending on the context in which those words are used. There are situations where presidential candidates will make certain statements in context, and then the next day it is trans translated into another <laughs> issue. Mm. Just like if you look at the times, they said a monkey won't work for a to, to chop. chop. Somebody may translate it literally <laughs> to say that uh, some people are being called monkeys, okay? But that is not it. So it depends on the context in which the statements are being made. Yes, sometimes strong words have been used, but you see, the media was very swift to condemn uh, such acts, okay? And that is exactly what our current media is reflecting. And if, 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 you, if you just look at the period before, during campaigning up to now, mm. you realize that most of the political parties have shifted away from the past, where people make trouble statements, a whole lot of things that makes our democracy, put our democracy into danger. Today, the scene is a little bit better. And how have we been able to achieve that? It's because the media, other civil society groups, the religious groups, mm. are prepared to condemn people who will not campaign based on what they can do for the nation. But they want to use tribal, ethnic, religious sentiments to win uh, political support. So you've realized that as a result of our past experiences and what the media and then the other so, uh, civil society groups and religious and the population at large is doing today, it has kept the various political parties to be in a certain uh, mood. And it is healthy for us as a country. Some have suggested that it's not as you describe it because individuals of parties, individual supporters have gone ahead to 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 make certain comments and we have not seen that uh, reprimand from the parties for instance they mentioned a member of your party who is said to have described another candidate as mutumbanza and yet uh, officially the party didn't come out to say anything about it or to a condemn direct, that direct comment. insult is something that needs to be condemned irrespective of where it is coming from because um it is not the insults that will, gi will give you the votes. Mm. No, it is not the insults. And you see, we shouldn't personalize what we are doing, okay? Personal attacks, it doesn't help. Because at the end of the day, the same person is going to lead you, okay? Let's take what is happening in America now. Mm. If today, Trump is to win, 
those things that were said about him who will get stuck. And that is the president America is taking to the world. So we need to shift the, the focus. It, it should be solely based on issues. The things that you want to do, how you want to achieve those things. And those are the things that the electorate wants to hear. So for me, if you mount the, the stage and then you start to insult, that is where people will reject you. So if it is coming from any angle, it is not a good thing. Mm. And for the 28 days that we have to the elections, we need to make our language very civil. We need to ensure that we direct our party loyalists to be peaceful, transparent in what we do. And I believe that is what the average Ghanaian is looking out for. Let, 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 me, let me stay with you on this. Now, uh, uh, Trump had an issue and went to court. Some have suggested that, well, we'll go to court, but there are certain indicators from the referee that doesn't give us the, the assurance that it will be a clean field. And so perhaps the courts are there, but we are still worried about it. How worried should we be that we might resort to other means and not the courts to, 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 to uh, ensure redress of our, our grievances? You see, um, as a country, over the period, we've condoned some of the wrong things, OK? Even the former EC boss did admit that over the past years, some of the elections that were held, he, he has to sometimes bend some of the rules just to ensure that everybody is on board. Just satisfied. OK? But the question is, are we condoning the illegality is that what we want as a nation? That people who do the wrong should be allowed to be heads of certain institutions? Is that what we want as a nation? Or we want a situation where the right things will be done? Look at the indiscipline around us. Mm. How did it come about? It's because of some of these things. Okay? The thing is A. Somebody does B, and then we say, oh, it is closer to A, so let's take it as A. So the next time, it will be C. And then you say, oh, C is closer to B. It's also closer to A, so you let's maintain it. And then the decay continues. continues. You see, that is what, as a nation, we need to avoid. The EC doing its work, having challenges, for me, it's normal. Because... These it are doesn't things affect its, its credibility in the eyes why, why of the Why should that party? affect its credibility? If the EC wants the right things to be done, the law, as it is, if you don't go for interpretation, people may interpret it differently. He's a lawyer. You read the Constitution. Your understanding of certain things in the Constitution as a lawyer is even different from the ordinary person. And sometimes... If the ordinary person is to take the issue to court, he might be right, mm. although you are a lawyer, you see. So interpretation to the issues brings finality, and then it becomes the status quo. So per what the EC have been able to do, sending the issues to court, and then the court coming out to give finality to the issues, it has set a standard for future elections, and for me, that is good for us as a country. It is good for us. Because if these issues had not gone to the Supreme Court mm. for finality to be brought to it, we would have been moving from one court to the other. And judges would be interpreting the issues differently as in how they, they look at it. So yes, the EC went to court. There are some of the things that they believed in. Yes, the court agreed with them. There are some of the issues that they believed in, the court did not agree with them. And that is the essence of democracy. So it is brought finality to the whole issue. There is fairness now. People now have that confidence mm -hmm. that yes, this is the way forward. 
So you may have different impressions about what the EC is doing. But for me, I believe that there should be some form of decency, some form of order, some form of due diligence in the way we do things as a country, especially aspiring to the high office of the land. Because that is the area where documents are of essence. Right. And if we are not diligent, even handling documents at that stage, what happens if you are elected as the president? I'm grateful. Let's check this story on the front pages of almost all the newspapers I have here. Daily Graphic uh, puts it, nine aspirants resubmit submit forms. Um, uh, the Daily Times says, who gets the note? Uh, the Daily Guy says, 13 presidents, with presidents in quote, fate hands, EC ballots tomorrow. And uh, one key thing I want us to look at is uh, that uh, comment by uh, Mr. Martin Amide that uh, patriotic Ghanaians must fight EC's Reagan plot. He is still suggesting that the EC is using the disqualification of these uh, persons to rig uh, the uh, elections. Mike, let me start with you. Now, they went, they, the court ruled, they went to the EC. The EC has uh, taken their forms. Uh, we're likely to get information uh, uh, today as to who gets uh, the note. But the whole process is, You've raised some points about it, leading to where we are this morning. How would you assess it in, in ensuring that we go to December 7, everyone is satisfied and on board? Is the EC on point? Is that how you want to describe it? Um, to be honest, uh, I don't have too much to add hmm. to what I said before. Or I just want to um, reiterate is the fact that the EC's inconsistent, inaccurate behavior does not generate confidence. Because you, the EC yourself, you went and found one mistake. Now you found 105. Does that smack of your incompetence for not detecting it before? And if they had been able to fill that one in the first nomination, would you have passed them? Maybe if you go and look in NPP and NDC forms today, you might find 100 other errors. Is that the kind of election we but want if, to run? If she's cleared them, um, how would you go back and, and, and find forms? No, but that's what I'm saying, that if maybe you should look at them again, mm. because that's what they've obviously done with the others. They've looked at them again and found not just 10 mistakes, over 100. Mm. Mm. I don't understand. And... What the EC is doing that really bothers me is the way they are handling the election. Now, if you remember, the Supreme Court judges had the occasion to tell the EC, we will not allow you to plunge this country into chaos. And the EC, by the way they've handled a lot of mundane things, have shown us that they either are negligent or deliberately putting certain stokes in the way. Now, why you don't, why you don't am I think they are doing the right thing? Well, let us start with this issue of the commission that was set up. A commission was set up with an NDC member as part of the commission, Dr. Queen. We complained about this. Also, we, we know him all, Dr. Queen. When the uh, STL Matariding came, Dr. Quenu was the one who was there who said he was handling the IT for NDC and blah, 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 blah. We made it a point. Sometimes we want to put the issue out in public. They came with recommendations. She said, even though I set you up, I won't listen to those recommendations. It's okay. You, you think Ghanians, he, no. his addition to the, the, the members uh, had the influence on the decision? No, 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 no. Because she didn't listen to them anyway. What do you worry about? No. The, uh, no, uh, no hold on. Dr. Quenu's addition. Yeah. You allowed that the child to flow a bit too. You let me talk small, then you ask me the first question. I beg you. Let me flow. Just give me this one. Now, electronic transmission of results became a big brouhaha when it became an issue of procuring for 29,000, this, that, that. Eventually, we were told that the primary election document will be the hard copy and that these transmissions will be done as norm the procurement was cancelled then it became the issue of 
the parties will not be giving coalition center sheets. My brother is an MP. I have done elections three or four times in Dominic Kwabinia as in a very key member in the campaign teams. And I'm always part of the coalition center team. Mm. Isn't it better for a chronological track check, okay, parallel vote tabulation to have the coalition sheet? Just even me and my look, you know what? Let's all have one one so that we can check. Simple election. Because you see, election is not about confusion. Mm. It's about who the people voted for because they like them. Either you have done well, they'll keep you, or you haven't done well, they'll suck you. That's all. We have to go to court <clears throat> to get this issue sorted out. Why? Then, eventually, the courts ruled. Now, she goes to England, has a meeting or an interview with BBC, and then openly says that, as for her, if the results are close, she will call for a recount. Ah, how? How can Dr. Ferejan call for a recount in Ghana? Do you remember 2008? Mm. What happened? 10. Just 30,000 difference. Dr. Ferejan never called for a recount. Because why you can call for a recount is the polling station. My brother is here. Let's talk technicalities of election. Or recollation at the collation center. Once those two have been finalized, you can't do any recount. Mm. So what does she mean? That she's going to call for a recount. Why? Why? You see, sometimes you ask yourself, these things are they deliberate? And one thing about some of our brothers is they want to overlook it because, oh, and uh, why is it that Charlotte Ose is being asked questions? Charlotte Ose is working for you and me. Taxpayers money. She's a creature of the Constitution. And by such creation, she is under the norms the whims and caprices of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And the Constitution is to be interpreted by the Supreme Court. So, Madame Charlotte was saying, in the public interest duty that she has to perform, is also so obliged. Right. So, Legitimate questions are can yes. be asked, of course. Th thank you very much. So, you can see that this is something which we need to take seriously. I've always said, Charlotte was saying, your job is to be a calculator. Stop thinking about calling results and then asking for recount and then you calculate, then you declare. As for CNN, you see what's happening? They, they are just tabulating what they see. They are calling the results. They are not declaring the results. Mm. The declaration can only be done by the EC. And that is what we're explaining to them that the other time when Jake followed the media a, a, a pattern and called the results based on the media, it cannot amount or be tantamount to a declaration. To any, anybody, the any, only any, person who any, can any, declare results is the EC. You, you don't think it, will, it can cause confusion? No. By party no. leaders like Jake, who was ever very powerful, uh, calling a press conference and, 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 and the can call elections. It's not going to you, cause you don't confusion. think it will bring confusion? No, because I see what they are saying is uh, in just, tandem. Uh, oh, I, 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 I come, I'm come to you. This, I'll this come point to you. But he he just said that it's any, in tandem any person can. with what the media hmm. themselves have said. So when you media you put finally on your this thing, uh, tv 3com um, you say Trump wins. Does that mean you are calling it? You are declaring election? No, way. no. You are giving the information as you have it. So if anybody, I'm telling you that the child likes the day for election, come and say, and be, look, didn't Sir John say we are one? No, my, it, was that I, calling I, my, the election? I think, I think. So, we, so I, assuming we have we stop all these candidates us. and their members decide <laughs> after <laughs> the election to hold press conferences and say they are calling the elections, you oh, don't foresee brother, confusion. Everybody calls ah. Okay. President John Mahama didn't okay. make a call from the north that all the people who are voting, the no verification, no count is not an issue. And he can say what he likes. If the EC hadn't agreed with him and say that whether President John Mahama called for no verification, no count, we don't agree, it's different. Unfortunately, they listened to him. Not only did they listen to him, when we went to court and we said, ah, but you said envy, envy, no verification, no vote. 
Then they explain mm. to the court, mm. oh, if Oman Hini and his entourage. Okay. So why did you allow Oman Hini and his entourage in Hachu? Who were denied voting? People like Mrs. Gordon. They were denied because the machine didn't take care. And we applied no verification of votes. So this is what we are talking about. Okay. Look, the bottom line is this. With regard to this whole um, elections and uh, electoral commission and everything, they must be transparent. They must give these political parties the certainty with which they require to plan. That is what will make a transparent election. Okay. Finally. All right. Okay. Finally, yes. Mm. Finally. <laughs> when they give out information to all parties, as of now, we are still waiting for a proxy and transfer list. We will wait. What we have seen has moved from eight registered mm. in Ladadi Kotopon district, for example, to 32. The EC told us that they allowed certain people who did not as applicants, because you know in Revelation 25, mm. the applicants themselves have to apply for proxy. Yet they are telling us that apart from the eight who applied, other people from abroad have been allowed to apply. We want the list and we will okay. cancel out all those names one by one. If they don't agree to cancel it, we'll take it to court to cancel it. Okay. So they better give us a list quickly right. so that we can proceed with the 7 December date. I'm grateful. Uh, the uh, information getting in is indicating that uh, Trump has crossed the 270. 